Good morning, friends, and welcome back. I'm a little bit nervous. It's been a long time since I've been on the camera. Um, I'm still on my weight loss journey. I've lost about five pounds, and then I kind of took a break, slipped up. But I'm back on track, and I'm counting my calories. I'm still counting at 1,500. Now it's summer vacation, so I wanted to try something new. Um, so I was thinking, since I love to cook, to try some different cuisines from around the world this summer, kind of like a series. So today what we're doing is a Japanese breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, within my calorie range. And we're going to show you some awesome different foods, traditional Japanese meals, and some fun meals. And yeah, uh, we're going to start with breakfast. A lot of the stuff I have is leftover from yesterday because obviously I'm the only one eating it. Um, but I will be making some stuff from scratch and that I will show you. And I will also link you to the other awesome YouTubers where I found these recipes in case you want to try them at home. I'm starving, so let's get cooking. All right, guys, we're gonna cook up some spinach. So this big uh, old pot is gonna take a long time to boil. So while that's getting ready, I will go ahead and show you the setup for a traditional Japanese breakfast. In traditional Japanese cuisine, um, the saying goes one main and two sides. So that's what we're gonna have on this plate is gonna be my main, which is gonna be salmon today. And these are gonna be my two vegetable sides. And that is not including your rice and your soup, which goes with every meal. And also something pickled. So the idea here is that you're going to create balance with different colors and different flavors. By the way, today's breakfast, um, I learned from a channel called Miwa's Japanese Cooking. And pretty much all the recipes, including the spinach and the salmon that I'm about to cook, are going to be in a video in my Japanese meal plan playlist. That is from her channel, with the exception of the egg roll, which is going to be from Japanese Cooking 101, but we'll get to that later. It wouldn't be a real Japanese breakfast without some tea. All right, our water's boiling. You'll notice that these have the stems on them still. Um, the ones that I saw in the cooking videos actually have even more stems on them. This is the ones I got at the Asian grocery store. So I noticed that <laughs> I noticed they put the stems in first so that they cook a little bit more than the rest. And then you just put the whole thing in there. It's only going to be in there for one minute. So I set a timer for one minute. one minute. All right, after only a minute, I pulled it out and strained it, and now I'm putting it in cold water. So I'm blanching it, basically, so that it stops the cooking. And so I'm just going to serve the spinach cold. Now we got to get started on the salmon. All right, so we were supposed to have salted salmon, but my... Um, Asian market near me did not have any that I could find so I kind of looked up a recipe to kind of do it myself so basically you rub it with sake and then you put a bunch of salt on it and you put it in the fridge and that's supposed to help dry out the skin and make it get extra crispy um, my salmon looks kind of sad because it was pre-frozen but I like these pre-frozen ones because they're usually the right size and the right amount of calories for my diet so I don't know if I should wash off all that salt but they didn't say to so here goes nothing I hope it's not the nastiest salmon ever <laughs> now, since I don't have the kind with the skin on the side of it I'm just gonna cook it mostly with the skin side down like I normally do all right so I took out the spinach and just cut it into bite-sized chunks now we're just gonna season it with some soy sauce and top it with what do we have here 
Bonito Flakes. So this is tuna, I believe. And it is dried into little flakes. It's important not to get moisture into the bag since they... And there it is. One side is complete. Alright, over here we have my tamagoyaki, did I say it right? And this is an egg roll. It's pretty hard to do, but I did find, um, I'm just reheating it because I made it yesterday. I did find a video on Japanese Cooking 101 where they show you how to do it with a round pan and it helps if it's a small one. So I did mine in a round pan so that I didn't have to buy this special rectangle pan, but what it is is they roll, they make a thin layer of egg and then roll it up and then they push it back and keep adding more until you get this really cool roll pattern and it is seasoned with mirin and a little soy sauce so it has like a sweetness to it. It's really good. So that's going to be another one of my sides here and then this one is pickles basically it's vinegar with um I did cucumbers some seaweed and these are little shreds of crab stick and what am I missing ah oh, my soup which I already had made so I'm doing this all without soy because I'm allergic to soy so I did not do miso soup I did use the two different types of stock, which is bonito tuna flavoring and um, kombu, which is another type of seaweed. So that's what my broth is based on, and I did the onions and the seaweed. I'm going to add some sesame seeds, but I did not add any miso or tofu to mine. Alright, that is the complete meal, guys. I just got to pour my tea, and I'll be set. All right, time for mid-meal thoughts. The salmon was salty, but it was salty in a good way. And it was basically the only salty thing in the meal, so it balanced out well. Like, my soup is not very salty at all. It doesn't, the stock doesn't come with salt in it. Um, and then the rice is bland. This... It has vinegar, it also has mirin in it, and sugar, which I substituted with stevia when I made the recipe. Great thing about making it yourself. Um, it has a, so it has a sweetness to it. If you like pickles, I mean, I eat a ton of pickles. If you like pickles, I highly suggest you make this pickle dish. I tried another one with daikon, but this one is the best. The, I was surprised, the Bonito Flakes, I never tried them before. They have like a really smoky flavor, almost like a campfire, which gave this a really rich taste I wasn't expecting. I don't know. I almost think this tasted better the next day, to be honest. Um, and yeah, that's about it for my thoughts. Um, I'm going to try making this with just egg whites to cut down on the calories next time I make it, which will be in a couple of days. Delicious. All right, it's 11.30, and that means it's time to start working on our lunch. For today, we're going to try the cold noodle. Um, so this one is from a YouTuber, Imamu Room. I hope I said that right. And these are going to be the actual noodles over here. They're somen noodles, which is a Japanese type of wheat noodle. And these are going to be the toppings. So it's going to have shrimp, crab stick, egg, which we're going to make an omelet out of and then make into little egg ribbon noodles. We're going to match stick some cucumber and do tomato slices and then also some shredded up nori and some sesame for the topping. 
and then it's going to have a cold sauce which is going to be kind of like a vinaigrette so it's kind of like tastes kind of like a salad so it's going to have rice vinegar soy sauce of course i'm using coconut aminos every time i say soy sauce i'm actually using that instead and some sesame oil she didn't say how much so i'm going to do a really small amount on that and then it calls for sugar but i have this big thing of stevia you, you can see I wrote on the inside of the lid stevia um, and I'm just going to use a little bit of that instead so the first thing I'm doing is waiting for the water to get hot to boil the noodles and while I do that I'm going to make the sauce and also we need to run the shrimp under some water because it's still frozen I ran out of ice I'm not going to be able to blanch the noodles so what do you think if I put the frozen shrimp in to cool off the water for a little bit it's cooked, it should be fine. Might have to strain it though, I don't know. There's some little pieces of weird stuff in there. If you're counting your calories, watch out for stuff like this because it comes with five little bundles of noodles. When you look at the nutrition label, it says six servings per container. So even though a serving is 56 grams, these bundles are all 69, 70 grams and you have to take some of them out for it to be one serving. gym it was leg day and um, on the way home I picked up my packages some of them I'm hiding from you because they are gonna be in one of my upcoming videos um, oh you saw them <laughs> um, but one of the things I got was replacement parts for this Roomba and I've had this thing for a year and a half I guess and I've never replaced the parts on it I was kind of scared because it's a, uh, you now they're like from Walmart, they're not like original parts, but I don't know, it seems to be working pretty good. It seems to be working like new. I should have got these parts a long time ago. Hope you guys are ready for dinner. Alright, we're making a fried pork cutlet. Very traditional. And I got you guys on a tripod today so you'll be able to watch what I'm doing. And then we're going to also make a side of mushrooms and tomatoes, which turned out really good together yesterday. And everything else is, a, here's a side I made yesterday. I'll tell you about it when it's on the table. And we're just going to heat those up in the microwave. Oh my gosh, my microwave is so dirty. It's hot enough. I'm going to lower it a little bit. So it doesn't get too hot. Let's start by making sure that the chicken is nice and dry. Not sure if that was actually one of the steps now that I think of it. <laughs> this time I'm going to try cornstarch. Yesterday I just used flour. Oh, that's very thick. I don't know if that was a good idea. <laughs> I know I got too much flour on it yesterday. Okay, next comes the egg. I feel like that was too much cornstarch. I'm going to try to get some of it off. Alright, so I dip it in the egg next. And on 
into the panko. So I used a pork chop when I did this yesterday. This time I'm trying um, a pork tenderloin and I just like kind of scored it and smashed it so that it would become flat like this but it actually was like a round pork tenderloin. I think that's the leanest cut of pork that you can get. Alright, here it goes. Timer four minutes. We're gonna cook that four for minutes. four minutes. Yeah. And while that's happening, I'm gonna start with these mushrooms. I probably got like three ounces of mushrooms in here. Let me check if you can see the mushrooms in the camera. Hey! Alright, now that that mess is done, let's zoom in on the actual cooking going on. Rice and the green beans are pretty warm, but I'm gonna give the soup another minute. Oh, that thing moved. Make a sauce. We're gonna do Worcestershire, which has no calories, and tomato ketchup. She had a special sauce, I forgot what it's called, in the video, um, but she said you can replace it with one tablespoon Worcestershire and two tablespoons of ketchup. The only thing I didn't like is that it wasn't sweet. But that probably was because, um, well, let's do a teaspoon since I didn't like it that much, or a half tablespoon. My ketchup just isn't very sweet because it's no sugar added, so I think I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener to it this time. Oh, I just tasted the sauce and it was so much better with the sweetness added to it, guys. Of course, we have rice on full serving this time. I only had half a serving at breakfast. Same soup from breakfast. You just saw me cook that up. The fried pork cutlet. This is green beans. I actually used Chinese long beans because that's the only ones they had in the Asian supermarket. And I have a homemade sesame dressing on there. So it's made of crushed up sesame seeds. And I did them instead of a mortar or pestle. I just used my little grinder attachment on my, um, like, Nutribullet kind of a thing. And then it has, like, some soy sauce or, I don't know, some sweetener maybe in it. And, yeah, I will show you the recipe in my playlist that I'm going to link. And then this one is a separate recipe. This is the pickles for today. It's daikon radish and carrots and it's pickled in rice vinegar with some sweetness and a little bit of chili pepper flakes so 
that's the meal today. I'm going to pour some water and have ginger tea with dinner. I am so hungry. I'll be back after dinner to show you the calories for the day. Time for thoughts on the meal. Soup is good. Rice was really good. Um, I made it in the rice maker. I'm getting better at the rice maker. Um, this sauce was so much better once I had the Splenda in it. I wish I had made the full amount because it was so good. Um, the pork last time I made it yesterday, I overcooked it a little bit um, because she said four to eight minutes. I should have realized if I'm just doing, you know, four ounces serving that it will be on the lower side. So I took it out right at five minutes today, I believe, and it was done a lot better. Also, it was pork tenderloin instead of a pork chop. Not sure if that made a difference, but it was really good. Um, this stuff, I made a mistake when I made it. I'm not sure if that's what's affecting it, but the daikon root has kind of a stinkiness to it. It's kind of off-putting. Um, when I was making it, it said to drain the water from it before you add the vinegar to start pickling it. Um, so I forgot to do that. I don't know if that's why it stinks. I also heard in another recipe they told you to soak the daikon pieces in rice water to get the stinkiness out so I did save my rice water when I made rice today and I might try that because um, I do have more daikon so I'm gonna try a couple more recipes with it before I call it quits this one I just made up myself because I love mushrooms um, and it turned out really good I think it's one of my new favorite combinations because the the rich flavor of the garlic and the onion and the mushrooms and then the tanginess of the tomatoes really balances it out. The green beans, of course, were delicious. They're kind of sweet. Um, with the sesame, it's almost like a peanut butter sauce. And, uh, yep, yeah, my water's heating up, so I'm going to finally have my tea. I don't tend to drink while I'm eating, but, man, I ate it all. Well, except for the stinky stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's see how, it, how my day turned out in my fitness haul. Can you guys see? So this was breakfast. I put the mirror in because it was in the egg for the egg roll. And then we have the cucumber and seaweed and the crab stick that was in the salad. And the salmon, the spinach, the rice, and, oop, and the coconut aminos I added today because I poured that on the spinach. Oops. Alright, then lunch. There's all the ingredients that are in my rice bowl. Oh yeah, so breakfast was 356. Yesterday was about 450. Um, lunch was 454 for that noodle bowl. And I could have cut the noodles now and it was super filling. Uh, the first time I ate it, <laughs> I was so full. I think my stomach's getting more used to it. Obviously I've been on like a normal six meals a day, which is normal for me. But now that it's summer, I want to only eat three times a day because it's too much work to cook and have dirty dishes six times a day. And I want to make enjoyable recipes that obviously are going to be a little more calories. I did get hungry in the afternoon. This is what I had. Crackers with a little bit of yogurt on them instead of like sour cream or whatever. And the last bit of my caviar because I didn't want it to go bad. And then here's this meal. I did everything separately. I tried to enter recipes in my fitness pal and the recipe thing would not save my recipe and I don't know if they made that like a function that's only for subscribers now or something but it just said it didn't say that it just said error and it wouldn't let me save it after I wasted half an hour typing in the recipes so I just went ahead and put every ingredient on here so there's the radish and the carrot there's the green beans and the sesame seeds that I used to make the sauce the canola oil that I fried it in that was see, fried food adds a lot of calories 126 calories for the canola oil and that's a that's that was kind of a guess I mean it was hard to tell how much oil was actually used when I fried it I'm guessing I consumed about a tablespoon and then there's the ketchup the egg 
and that's it. So the total for that meal was a whopping 546, the biggest meal of the day, and I'm going to be tired from all that rice. I thought about only eating half of it, but then I was like, oh, whatever. I don't have anything left to do tonight, you know? So, got everything done. Got my workout done. Got to clean the kitchen, but that might be able to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> my least favorite part of cooking Japanese meals is all of the dishes. Um, I hope that you liked the video. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more cooking and healthy stuff and working out or prep or anything like that. And uh, give this video a like if you want to see more food from around the world because I'm hoping to make more videos like this. Bye guys!